Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship Devotional Bible Study, our gift from God, the light of the world. Please click the link in the description to read along, and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading in the New Living Translation. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Proverbs 10, 16-17 reads, The wages of the righteous is life, but the earnings of the wicked are sin and death. Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. In yesterday's message, Don't Fear the Reaper, Fear the Lord, we discussed how the life of over 150,000 souls will cease to exist bodily on earth today, but giving our very large global population the actual chance of death on any given day is very low. However, we discussed another factor that most don't consider and that no one can calculate. The Lord's return, which can be any day now. Whether our earthly existence comes to an end and we are one of the many who will die today, or the promised return of the Lord, everyone will face him in judgment, which determines where each soul will spend eternity, heaven or hell. As God is just, the verdict won't be arguable as each chooses their way, here and now. While this may seem daunting to an unbeliever, the best news ever is that our judge is also the same God who has already offered and demonstrated his unfailing love and faithfulness in making atonement for all who have sinned and fallen short of his glory by Jesus' death on the cross. Accepting this payment for the death penalty of our sins requires a humble, submissive heart that keeps with repentance and lives holy and righteous to God by the indwelling Holy Spirit which all begins with the fear of the Lord. It would be much easier to live a life ignoring this truth and acting like the inevitable will never come. But the fact remains that we will all come to an end of this earthly existence and the question of what happens next persists. And what questions are ever answered by ignoring them or refusing to properly address them? Well, Unfortunately, this is how so many people live their lives, ignoring the major problems in life, hoping that the thought of it will just go away while focusing on temporary happiness of the here and now. This avoidance technique prevents people from truly moving forward and seeking the Lord and robs them of the hope of eternity and the joy God purposed them for. With a temporal focus on pleasure, one's happiness is fleeting as is any other feeling because it hinges on situations and circumstances of this life. But God is eternal, and in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, King Solomon said, He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Not seeing but feeling the void of eternity 
mankind gropes in the dark trying to find fulfillment. But all attempts fall short apart from the eternal God who made them. Because of his great love, grace, and mercy, God has made a way for all to see. He has made a way to reveal his heart to wandering souls who are open to receiving so much more than this dying world has to offer. Speaking of the Lord, the Apostle John said, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John wrote, He, that is Jesus, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. In John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. In Romans 6.23, the Apostle Paul said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this life, each person has the opportunity to decide where they will spend eternity. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the next verse states that all are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The choice is up to each person, and their decision can have a significant impact on others around them. Remain in the darkness and stand alone on their own deeds, or walk in the light of life and live by the truth through faith in Jesus. All must know that they don't have to go it alone when the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. But coming to Him requires laying down one's pride of standing on their own merit and a healthy fear of the Lord which humbles every heart who truly seeks Him. Joshua 24 verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. For all who choose to fear the Lord, accept His gift of eternal life and live for Him, the Apostle Peter instructs, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Thank you.